Have you been wanting to do some simple bash scripting, but you're not really sure how to get started? You're not really sure what you're doing as far as bash and bash scripting? Well, today I'm going to cover some of the basics, things like variables, arrays, if, then, else, and some other things. So follow along, and I promise you, at the end of this video, if you follow me step by step, you should be able to create your very first bash scripts. Let's get started. Before we get started, there are a couple of tools that you will need in order to do this bash scripting. First, you're going to need a text editor, of course, right? We're, we're about to do some programming, so you need a plain text editor. Today, I'm going to be using Emacs. If you know Vim, Vim's a great text editor. Nano would be fine at the command line. Uh, if you wanted a graphical text editor, gedit is great. Genie's good. VS Code, Sublime, Atom. Pick whatever plain text editor you want to use, whatever you know and feel comfortable with. I, I'm going to assume you know how to use your text editor of choice. I'm not going to cover how to use whatever text editor. So make sure it's a text editor that you're comfortable with. Also, you're going to need a terminal emulator of some kind. So pull up a terminal. Yes, you're going to have to do a few things at the terminal. I assume that you have at least a very, very basic knowledge of the shell. You don't have to be a command line wizard, but you should be able to bring up a terminal and run a few basic commands. So let's get started. So the first thing I will do is I'm going to pull up both my text editor, uh, which is Emacs here on the left hand side of the screen, and my terminal emulator here on the right hand side of the screen. Let's go ahead and create an empty document so we can go ahead and write a script. So I'm in my terminal. I'm in the home directory here in my terminal. First thing we need to do, let's create that empty document. The easy way to create an empty document at the command line is touch and then space name of document. I'll call this new shell script new.sh. All right, and let's go ahead and open that in our favorite text editor. If you're already in the terminal, you could open it up in a uh, text-based, terminal-based text editor like Nano or VI or Vim or Emacs if you do Emacs in the terminal. I do the graphical version of Emacs here, so I'm going to open that file, new.sh. All right, now let's, let's begin writing. First of all, let me zoom in here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can see what I'm doing here in Emacs. Now, the very first thing you should do with your new shell script is at, on the very first line, write shebang which is the shebang is the hash symbol followed by the exclamation symbol and then the path to where bash lives on your system which should be slash bin slash bash now i say it should be that it could be somewhere else so if i go back to the terminal let's make sure that bash is actually in that location i could do a where is space bash and i'm running arco linux which is an arch based linux distribution the binary for bash actually is not in slash bin slash bash. It is in slash user slash bin slash bash. Now there's probably a link <laughs> linking uh, slash user slash bin slash bash to bin bash. So this would be fine for your shell script. It's not like it would harm anything. But if I really wanted to, just to be on the safe side, I could do the shebang followed by user bin bash. There's one other way to do this. A very common way is to do slash user slash bin slash env for environment space bash. And that, no matter where bash is on your system, that should have you covered. So that should always be the first line of your bash script. The next thing I often do at the beginning of my scripts is to leave a comment letting other folks know exactly what this script is. To leave a comment, a comment is basically a line that's not really code. It's not going to be executed uh, when you execute the script. It's, it's not really programming code at all. It's just leaving yourself a note and leaving a note for others that may view this script at a later date. So you do that with the pound symbol and then type whatever you want to write. Whatever, if, you, if it's a note, say this is a test script. And that's it. That's, that is your commented line. Again, this is not actually code. It's not going to be executed when you run the script. This is just a note for you. Uh, and you can leave notes all over your scripts. I often leave a lot of notes in my scripts, especially if it's something confusing. Like if I go back and I'm reading the code and I'm not exactly sure what that code does, I'll leave a note. Hey, this code does this. This line does this. This does that. 
any of you guys that have pulled down some of my scripts from my GitLab page uh, know that in my configs and in my simple bash scripts, I often you know do something fancy, you know, it, with with the comments. Like it's not unusual for me to leave a comment that looks something like this, <laughs> you know. A little ASCII art DT with my name, location of my YouTube channel, and of course location to my GitLab repository. Now let's let's actually do something with the script because uh, again, all we've done so far is listed the path to where the bash binary is on the system, and we left some comments, but that's not really code, right? There, there's nothing that's going to be executed when we run this script right now. So the first thing we need to do is actually have the script do something, have it execute a command. Now, what kind of commands can you have your bash script execute? Well, pretty much any command you could do in the shell. So this is the, the shell here, which is bash as well. So pick a command. How about ls? You know, you could have an ls command. Well, why don't we have a script that runs ls? I know that seems kind of pointless, but again, the, the sky is the limit on what you can do. But let's go ahead, and I'm going to save that. And let's see if we can actually execute that. How you execute your shell scripts at the command line is you need to do period slash and then the path to that script, which is new.shell. It says permission denied. Okay, so when we created this document, this new.sh document, we did not make it executable. So how do you do that? Well, you need to chmod and then plus x for executable and then the name of the document new.sh run that and now when you go back and execute that script which is period slash new.sh it will actually run and what did it do well it ran the ls command right here in the terminal so that is actually your script again period slash new if i hit enter it runs the ls command if you wanted to get kind of crazy, I mean, have it execute this command, Firefox. Let me save it and go back to the shell here, clear the screen, rerun the script. What does the script do? It launches Firefox. Now, it's kind of pointless to have a script that executes a command like ls or Firefox because why wouldn't you just type ls at the command line or, you know, launch Firefox with your run launcher or through your menu system or even at the command line. But where bash scripting gets interesting is when you need to do complicated stuff. For example, uh, have you ever wanted to run HTOP, like a command line program like HTOP, for example, and you tried to run it from a menu or from your run launcher, and you type HTOP, hit enter, and it doesn't execute? Well, why doesn't it execute? It's, it doesn't execute because HTOP has to run inside a terminal. HTOP requires you to first launch another program, a terminal, and then run HTOP from inside that. For example, if I run dmenu right now, and I type the command HTOP, which HTOP is installed on my system, if I hit enter, nothing happens. No, first I need to actually open a terminal, and then run HTOP. This is where doing something like a bash script is interesting because obviously you can do multiple commands in a bash script. You can tell it, hey, open my terminal. My terminal, by the way, is ST, but you could use whatever terminal you want to use, GNOME terminal or Xterm, whatever terminal's on your system, write the command to launch it, and then do a semicolon, and then HTOP. Now let's save that. Control S for save. Make sure, there we go. Of course, that's an Emacs command. We're not discussing Emacs today. Save that shell script and whatever, however your text editor saves things. And then let's rerun new.sh. And what does it do? It launches a terminal. Well, it launches a terminal, but it didn't run htop. What happened here? Well, let me close this terminal that it launched. And when I close that terminal it launches, it runs htop in the very first terminal that I executed the script in. Kind of weird, right? Kind of weird behavior. Now, of course, we could clean that up and actually make that work the way we expect. So I could run this command, st space dash e, which tells st basically to open itself in a new environment. And then I need to actually tell st in quotes to run htop. 
Now, let me save that, and I bet this works as expected. Now, when I run this script, it's going to open up a new terminal, and in that new terminal, run HTOP. There we go. Of course, we could get even more creative here. You know, I could have this script launch ST and then HTOP inside ST, and then let's hit enter, and on a new line, hey, also launch Firefox. Then on the next line, why don't we tell it sleep for three seconds after you launch Firefox, and then after you wait three seconds, why don't you launch Genie, which is a graphical text editor I have on, installed on the system as well. You know what? Let me save this document. Let's execute the script and see if that actually works. There's HTOP. Now, it didn't go ahead and launch Firefox, but I bet if I closed ST and HTOP, it will launch Firefox. <laughs> it's the same thing as before. If I close Firefox, it's going to wait three seconds. And then it's going to launch Genie. <laughs> right? So... <laughs> Perfect timing on that. Let me clear the screen on that. So how we need to do this is we need to tell it instead of waiting for one to execute and, and then close and then open the next one, how we should do that is let's add an ampersign. That an ampersign at the end of each line. So, you know, open up HTOP inside ST and Firefox and, you know, and then sleep three seconds and then run Genie. <laughs> then let's save that. And let's see if this is the expected behavior. Yes, they say it launches all three. Uh, of course, it did it wait the three seconds? Genie seemed like it popped up pretty quick. Let's execute that again. Just make sure. So, uh, HTOP and Firefox should load immediately. Genie should take three seconds. Genie is coming up before <laughs> Firefox. HTOP, Genie. So it's not quite. I think the problem is that last ampersand behind the sleep because it's not waiting for sleep to finish. You know, it's just going ahead and launching Genie. So if I remove that last ampersand. See, so sometimes you have to play with these things. You know, I actually did not expect that to happen. That was a gen genuine shock <laughs> when Genie launched so fast. Let's see if this works as expected now. It's waiting three seconds, and boom, there's Genie. So that is why I needed to remove that ampersand. So one of the basic things you will want to do in your scripting is uh, declare variables, you know, set up variables. For example, say I had a very long script where I did a lot with terminal programs and, and uh, like there were a hundred lines in this, maybe it's a config file for a tiling window manager where I executed ST, which is my terminal. Well, instead of having so many places where ST is in that script, maybe I substitute it for this variable. I'm going to say how about my term equals and then st. Now, if I wanted to, I could do something like dollar symbol my term and then dash e h top, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So if I go ahead and save that, let's go ahead and execute it. And again, the script runs just fine. So that is how you do variables. Again, you just set up. The main thing you want to do with variables, main point, you want to make sure you don't add a space but before or after the equal sign. So do whatever the variable name equals with no space and then what you want that variable to actually equal to. In this case, it was a command I wanted to equal to, st. Now, why would I do something like that? Well, imagine like my xmonad config and all my key bindings that involve the terminal in some way. I have a hundred lines where st appears. But what if one day I decide I don't want to use st as my terminal emulator? Maybe I want to use xterm or urxvt. There would be a hundred lines in my config file that I have to go in and edit and replace st with xterm or whatever. Well, if I set up a variable and then in the script that those hundred lines where I'm launching the terminal are just my term, the, I only have to change one line now to change my terminal emulator in the script. I just go in here and replace st with xterm, boom, I'm done. So that is the great thing about setting up variables. So if you are repeating a lot of stuff in your script, just set up a variable for it. Now why don't we like do a real world example of me creating a script that actually does something. I'm gonna just come up with some thing. So what I did 
is I created a directory on my system called test. And if I do a ls, you will see I created six subdirectories inside the test directory. And if I cd'd into one of these, like the blog directory, subdirectory here, do an ls, you see I have some markdown uh, documents in here. These are documents that are written in markdown, which is, you know, plain text. It's the kind of thing you would typically uh, edit in a plain text editor, like Emacs, for example. Anyway, I'm going to cd back into the above directories because the test directory is really where I'm, I want to do some work. So in the test directory, I have those six subdirectories. What if I wanted to create a D menu script that let me choose between these six directories? And then once I choose what directory I want to work in, that D menu script shows me all the markdown files in that directory and then when I choose the markdown file I want to work with it launches itself automatically in Emacs or whatever text editor I want to use. Sounds kind of complicated. It's not. I could do that pretty simply using a simple bash script. I, basically what I want the D menu script to do, let me show you a basic D menu script. So it, this is me launching D menu where it opens up a list of config files that I could potentially edit. That's kind of what I was wanting to do here, except instead of config files, I wanted to list these six directories in that test directory I created. And typically I would do that is doing something like, you know, just listing them out with, well, I would, I could just type them out if I wanted to. Log, contact, forums, merchandise, videos, and then in the list, I could do something like that. But that's kind of tedious, right? Because what if I add more directories here? What if I delete directories? Then I'm going to have to edit the bash script here. I'm going to have to add those directories or delete those new directories in this list I created. Well, there's got to be a better way. And there is. What I could do is run an ls command here in the test directory. And it lists those. Well, I could have the bash script do a ls command, and it will give me these directory names. But it will also give me the permissions. It'll also give me my username, the date. I don't need all of that stuff. But if you know a little bit of the command line stuff, and this is going to be complicated, but I would run this command here. So I'm going to run the ls command, slash bin, slash ls, what I'm doing, uh, space, dash d, do the ls command, but only show me directories. I don't want to see files, right? I just want these six directories. I don't need file names. Um, I also uh, am cutting out some stuff. Basically, the cut command is finding everywhere there's a space, and then, and then it's going to show me the first field. I like that list. I can work with that list. It has a trailing slash if I wanted to. I could, you know, get rid of the slashes too and just have the directory names without the slashes. I kind of like the slashes though because in the D menu script when those directories show up with the trailing, the backslash, it'll be obvious that I'm dealing with a directory in the script. Uh, I'm going to leave it. So I'm going to copy this command because that's what I want the script to actually execute. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to go back here. I'm going to delete that list and instead have it run that. Now for this to actually execute, you know, this options list, actually execute the ls command and do all this, we actually do need to put a dollar symbol in front of the parentheses in this case. Uh, of course, this is not actually going, to, uh, we can't run the script just yet. Again, this is just creating uh, options equals, it's a variable, right? Options equals this command. Then I'm going to go down to the next line. I'm going to have it run this command, echo, which echo basically print. On, on the terminal, which is where we're going to execute this, print this line. So echo, and then I'm going to do dollar symbol. I'm going to do the swirly looking brackets here, options. So I want it to echo this options command. Let's save that, and then I'm going to go back to the uh, terminal. Yeah, let me clear that and run it again. And there you go. It is running the ls command and then it's doing the cut command and giving me a list of directories with the trailing slash behind it. Those are not the right directories though. 
Why are those not the right directories? It's because the new.sh file is in the home directory. And again, I really wanted that ls command to be run inside the test directory. Well, how do we do this? Well, we go back into our shell script. And in options, we want it to cd into test first. So cd into, in my case, slash home slash dt slash test space and then run and and space and then run the ls command. I save that and then execute that script again. There we go. So I like that. So about, blog, contact forms, merchandise videos, those were the six directories that I wanted to appear in this list. Now we worked with variables before. I mean we created one, this options, you know. Why don't we create another variable while we're at it? Because quite frankly, that is kind of sloppy slash home slash dt slash test. Uh, why don't I actually make a variable for that? How about I do my directory or my dir equals and then in quotes, single quotes or double quotes, it really doesn't matter, slash home slash dt slash test. And then in the quotes. And then I can go back down here and delete slash home slash dt slash test and instead do a dollar symbol and then once again the the brackets and then inside the brackets my directory. I save that, execute the script again. It works exactly the same. But I the only thing is I swapped out, you know, home dt test for this variable my directory. Now how do I get this to launch in D menu, you know, you guys know what D menu looks like. Well, this is D menu, you know, it's a, basically a run command launcher, it's kind of what it is. So, but I want it to take this list of directories and give me that inside D menu a, as options. How you typically would do this, if I go back to the terminal, D menu is typically run with options like this D menu space, and then I'm going to give it these flags dash I dash P for prompt. And then what do I want the prompt? How about my directories? If I hit enter right now, nothing happens. Let me just control C to kill that. A D menu doesn't actually do anything. It's because we really didn't pipe anything into D menu. Uh, D menu wasn't going to run anything right there. But we could pipe something into D menu. For example, if I wanted to, I could, you know what, pipe this list right here. So if I want, or not even the whole list, I could just do a partial, but let's do that. And then I could do the pipe symbol right there. And then if I wanted to, pipe all that into that, and then watch what happens. Now I actually get something. I have my directories and then the prompt, but it really didn't give me that list. I probably needed to wrap those in quotes. I'm sure that's probably what I needed to do. Let me rerun that one more time, and then the list, let me actually wrap that in quotes. I should have known better than that. If I run that, that's still not giving me the proper list here. Let me think about this problem for a second. You know what? Because that's not an actual command, this list. I probably need to run something like echo and then in quotes the list, pipe it into D menu. There we go. <laughs> So that would work, something like that. And I, again, anything that we can do, you know, at the, the prompt here, we can actually put in our bash script. So let me go ahead, I'm going to get rid of this echo here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, basically our D menu prompt. And I'll call it choice equals dollar symbol. And then the command, uh, I'm going to basically just do that echo command that we just did. All right, so basically, I just put that command that we'd run in the, the terminal so we know it works here. Let me save this. And then, you know what, let's run our sh uh, shell script, new.sh, and see what happens. All right, the D menu launches. I've got the prompt. You know, I could type here if I wanted to type something. And then it lists our directories. But no. If you notice, because they're all in this pink background, that is one directory. It thinks there's only one directory and it's called about blog contact form. Yes, yeah, all one word. Because to be a proper list here in the bash script, 
they need to be on their own separate line. I'm actually just gonna, this is just a quick and dirty script here. Let's just go ahead, hit enter after each selection. Let's save that script. Let's rerun this D menu script here. Ah, see now we actually have six different options. We have about, blog, contact. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. The only problem is, again, I, I would have to manually edit the directories in that list every time if I went with that. Is there a better option? Absolutely. So this options equals, and then this ls command, which also equals that, is actually an array. An array is basically a list of stuff. It is a, basically those lists that this options list is an array. It's a list of those directories inside the test directory. And you can work with arrays in quotes, I would do dollar symbol, and then let's do the brackets again, and then options. So we're going to call on options here, and then in the square brackets, I'm going to put the at symbol. What does that mean? It means echo, print out, everything in the options list. That's what the at symbol is. Like, give me all of it, everything that's a part of that array. Then pipe that into D menu, run D menu with these flags, I and P, and then the P is for prompt. What do I want the prompt to say? I want it to say my directories colon space. Let's save that. Hope this doesn't get too complicated, uh, but hopefully you guys watching me just kind of go through something on the fly. Hopefully you kind of see what's going on. Let me run that script and it works, right? It gives me everything in this options array, right? It echoes it out pipes it into D menu, makes D menu's prompt say my directories colon space. And if I wanted to, I could actually search for something. I could start typing, you know, and once it gets to the last thing that that fits what I'm typing, you know, it just goes straight to it. Now, me, if I hit enter right now, nothing happens, right? Nothing's returned. It's because we haven't told D menu what to do when we choose something in that options array. What do we want it to do? Well, why don't we create a if then else kind of statement. For example, if the directory is called about, do this. If the directory is called blog, do that. So a basic if statement in bash would be something like if, do the square bracket and space. Make sure you add a space. And then we're gonna do a quote, dollar symbol, choice. So basically if one of our choices, space, equals space and then about now the a slash so if one of the choices is called about with the slash because you remember we have the slashes behind the names and then for space again and then the trailing square bracket and then do a semicolon space then so if this is true then do this echo it works. All right. Matter of fact, we could just do a if then, and then to close it out, do fi, the reverse of if. I save this document. Let's execute the script, see what happens. So if I choose blog in the uh, list and hit enter, nothing happens, of course. Let me execute the script again. But if I choose about, let's see what happens. Notice in the terminal, I get it works, exclamation point. <laughs> so that is if and then. Let me run that one more time. I'm gonna execute that script about with the slash. What if instead I wanted to, because it's a part of an array, what if I don't have to actually call on it by name? I could actually uh, call on it in this uh, way right here, dollar symbol, and then do the curly brackets. Inside the curly brackets, we're going to say in the choice array, square brackets, give me the very first thing which they're numbered starting with zero. Because about is the very first thing in the list, it should be the zeroth thing in the array. So the very first thing. I'm going to save that. Let's execute the new.sh script again. All right, now if I choose something not about, say contact, nothing happens because in the script we didn't tell it to ever do anything if I choose contact. But if I choose about, it should echo it works. It didn't do anything. So just calling on choice 
doesn't really give us anything. I think what I need to do, oh, it's not actually choice that I need to do. So it's not choice there. Let's see if options. Let's pick something from the options array. It's not the choice array. See, this is why we do everything. We leave all the mistakes on camera. Save that. Now if I choose blog, uh, it says too many arguments. Okay. If I rerun the script and choose about, too many arguments. So it's not the options array. You know what I think I need to do? Let's set up a, another variable, uh, basically, to make sure that this is an array that we're choosing from. ARR for array equals, and then what I want it to equal to is, in parentheses, dollar symbol options. I want you to take all everything from that options list, make it an array, and then if choice equals that array, the first item from that array, then echo it works. Save that. Let's run the script. First, let's see what it does if I choose something that's not uh, about. Nothing happens. That's what we wanted to see. Now let me choose about and see what happens. It works. So it's working. So again, it's kind of a quick and dirty on camera kind of hacking bash script, right? Uh, and I, I like to leave mistakes in my videos. Those of you that are new to the channel, I like to see you guys see me make mistakes and then fix it. I, I think that's important because you're not going to get everything right the first time you do things. I want you to, guys to see I don't get frustrated. I just work it out. I just keep hacking on it until I figure it out. All right, so there's six items in that list, though. We only told it what to do if the very first one was selected. We didn't give it any other instructions. What if you know, the second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth directory is selected instead of the first. Well, instead of if, then, we could do if, then, do this, and then the next line, we'll do elif, else if. So if we choose the very first option, do this, then else if choice is the second thing in the array, which would be number one, one is actually the second thing because the numbering starts at zero, then do this. We'll tell it to echo. It does not work. Let's get rid of the S. All right. So if I save that, let's execute it. Run the script. First of all, let's choose something that's not uh, either the first or second item. Nothing happens. That's what we expected. Now let's choose the very first item about. It should say it works. Perfect. Let's run the script again. Choose the second item, which is blog. And it says it does not work. All right. So basically, if we wanted to do something different with each of the six items, I would have to do if, then, elif, then, and then elif again. And you know what? This is save time. I'm just doing a quick copy and paste job. So basically, I'm doing if then statements for each of the six options and then I'm gonna say echo you know what why don't you echo the name of the directory I choose So if you pick the first directory echo out the name of the first directory alright so I completed the list so if you choose the second thing in the array for example I want you to print out the name of the second thing in the array which is the directory names themselves alright I'm gonna save that let's run it all right, so I'm going to run the script, and whatever directory I choose, it should print out that directory's name in the terminal now. And it does. All right, the script, we're starting to get somewhere. The only thing is I don't want to run this D menu script, right, where it lists these directories. What I wanted it to do, I wanted to, to list these directories, and when I chose the directory, I wanted it to, to give me the markdown documents in that particular directory I chose, and then let me open whatever markdown file and whatever text editor I wanted to run it. That's a complicated script and I've already been <laughs> at this script and making this video for a while. So to speed things up, I'm going to make this a little bit quicker. So what do I want this script to do? You know what I want it to do? I want it to open up my text editor, which is Emacs. I tell you what, why don't you open the directory that I choose inside Emacs. Well, you guys are like, Emacs is a text editor. How is it going to open up a directory in the text editor? Well, Emacs also is a file manager as well. It has a file manager called DeerEd actually built into it. So if you open a directory in Emacs, it will actually open up that directory. So I'm going to say, hey, if 
you choose this from that array, open up Emacs. I'm going to use the Emacs client. Give it this flag, dash C. Now what's interesting here, if I, you know, just do something like open up Emacs and then, you know, open up Emacs at this location, there's something we need to take into consideration here. For one thing, I have it open up. If I haven't opened up the very first directory in the list, which is about, it's saying Emacs, open up the about directory. Well, what about directory? About, remember this script is being opened up in home, in the home directory. The about directory I want to open up is in home slash test slash about. So, remember I uh, did the variable at the beginning of this script, my directory equals home slash dt slash test. Well, what we need to do is actually say, hey, Emacs, first, I want you to open up the path to my directory. Now, the path to my directory does not end in a slash, so I need to, I need to either add a slash in between my directory and the array, or what I probably should do is just add a slash to the variable here. That, that makes a little more sense. Now, I think, I think that would work. Uh, one other thing, uh, just saying uh, launch Emacs doesn't work. You actually have to give it a command. Execute. E-X-E-C, execute Emacs at this location. Let's save it and actually run this. If I choose about, let's see if it opens up Emacs file editor at that directory location. And it does. That is Emacs that just launched. That is Emacs directory editor, that's file editor. And it actually opened up in, you see at the top, slash home slash dt slash test slash about, and there's two markdown documents actually already in that directory. So how cool is that? Uh, all I'm going to do is actually do the same thing. You know, I could actually just, you know, do some copying real quick. No, undo that. All right, so now I've got this where it should open up any of the directories that I choose at their proper location inside Emacs's file manager. Uh, first thing, I didn't save it, so let's save the document, and then let's execute the shell script here in the terminal, and let's see if it would open up, I don't know, how about the videos directory inside Emacs, and it does, and I've got a, a bunch of markdown documents in that directory. And I think that's all I'm going to do with this script today. Again, this was just an example of, you know, some kind of thing you might want to do with a bash script. I mean, again, this was just a maybe kind of a contrived example, but there will be things you want to do on your system that sometimes you need a little scripting for. And again, I hope this inspires you a little bit. I'm sure some of you guys are probably watching this video thinking, man, there's this one thing I've always wanted to do and I didn't know how to do it. I know it's possible if I knew a little bad scripting, man, just get in there and play. Uh, now that I've shown you a little bit of the basics and, you know, just how to make a, a, a simple bash script using variables, arrays, if then statements. Uh, just knowing that you can already do a lot with bash. Now before I go, this show was made possible by Ansem, First Chris, Second Chris, Daniel, David, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Corbinian, Lambda, Mitchell, Natek, Philip, Rob, Robert, Sean, Stephanie, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about bash scripting wouldn't be possible. Show is also brought to you by all those other fine ladies and gentlemen, all those names you see on the screen that help support my work over on Patreon. Sincere thank you to each and every one of you guys. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider doing so. You'll find me at DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.